want to welcome now to the program Special Envoy to the Indo-Pacific, Richard Tibbles. Richard, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, you're here uh, for much, a Laura. special uh, conference in Canberra. China uh, these days is often, you know, plainly as stated as an issue that needs to be discussed and often it's in veiled language. How would you say the concern levels are outside of Australia when it comes to Chinese influence and dominance, particularly in our region? Thanks very much, Laura, for having me on the show. Uh, the EU's policy towards China is pretty consistent since 2019. Mm. We regard China as a partner, uh, a competitor and a systemic rival. I don't think I'm telling you any surprises if uh, the elements of competition and rivalry uh, are at the forefront these days rather than partnership. But we still regard China as a crucial uh, economic partner, not just for the EU, but for the rest of the world as well. Uh, but we need to uh, de-risk uh, some of the vulnerabilities that we have. And in the security field, we need to make sure that uh, uh, China is uh, upholding in the in international law. And obviously, this mm. is uh, it particularly relevant when you look at uh, Putin's illegal invasion uh, of Ukraine. We certainly hope that yeah. China will exercise uh, its role as a permanent member of the Security Council to uh, call on Russia to respect uh, Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial inte integrity. Closer, closer to you, the uh, UN Convention of the Law of the Sea is the basis, I think, for mm. the resolution of disputes in the maritime field in this part of the world, extremely important. We uh, in the EU uh, are increasing our member states' uh, naval visits to the region, and we, uh, as the institutions, are working to build the capacities of our partners. So uh, we, we are doing everything we can to enhance uh, security in the region, by working with our partners, including Australia, of course, is very much a like-minded country here. Is it, is it about that like-mindedness? Is it about that solidarity with a democracy from the EU's point of view? Or do you have serious concerns about, you know, those laws of the sea you talk about, the dominance in the Asia-Pacific and how that will affect Europe? Uh, obviously, uh, freedom of navigation is absolutely vital for the EU's economic interests, and that's one of the key reasons why you've seen a step up in the EU's engagement uh, of the region. The Indo-Pacific region is extremely economic, economically dynamic, uh, and the EU's relations economically with the region are burgeoning. Uh, mm. So we want to make sure uh, that uh, the freedom of navigation and peaceful uh, situation is is maintained and that's why you've seen the establishment of uh, the EU naval operation in the Red Sea responding yeah. to the uh, Houthis uh, attacks recently. We see that Red Sea is a vital uh, communication point between uh, Europe and the Indo-Pacific so protecting maritime vessels in that region is absolutely vital. It's a demonstration of our role. Well that said the Red Sea and what has been happening there with the Houthi rebels? Of course, Australia was asked to uh, send support. We did, uh, but we did not send a ship. Would would you expect and would you like to see Australia step up its operations there? Well, uh, that's a decision for the Australian government, of course. Mm. I think for us, we are very, very well, very, very pleased uh, always when uh, our partners uh, support us in our military and civilian operations uh, around the world. Uh, Australia has a, a framework agreement with us to facilitate Australia's partnership in our, in our operations, so we'd be very pleased to see that, of course. Mm. Um, but Australia is doing its uh, bit already, so I don't want to minimise what it is uh, already doing uh, with uh, other Western partners. Well, Richard, uh, enjoy your time here. It's lovely to speak to you uh, briefly and enjoy Canberra. We'll check in with you soon. 